Hey everyone, it's Prey. So today we're going to be looking at the age old question. How do you troll without getting permabent? Wait, wrong channel? Today we're going to be analyzing in depth how Grandmaster players support versus how low elo players support. We're going to be diving in on the patterns and trends that signify the difference between a good support player and an average or bad one, as well as really get into how you can start taking these trends from the top support players to practice for yourself to climb. Whether you're a support main or just wanting to pick up a support or two to flex, good on you by the way, pat yourself on the back. This video is going to cover what you can do to carry games. Before we jump right into it, make sure to check out GameLeap.com for hundreds of professional guides made by top 500 professionals tailored to make you improve fast. Click the link below for a 25% discount on a GameLeap membership today. So going into the raw stats of support picks, let's analyze the pick rates of certain heroes in low versus high elo. Starting off into low elo, we can see that there are two picks that are extremely prevalent here but are otherwise not used even close to equally as often as in high elo. These two picks are Moira and Mercy. Now, why do you think that is? Well, there are plenty of reasons for this. And to talk about the first reason, let me explain the concept of skill floor versus skill ceiling. Now, in any highly competitive game, there are certain picks or playstyles that have this floor and ceiling. Now, a skill floor signifies how easy it is to pick up said pick or playstyle mechanically. And what I mean by that is that a skill floor determines how bad you can be. For example, Winston would be described as a low skill floor hero because mechanically, he doesn't really require aim. We'll get back to Winston in a second. A skill ceiling is how far you can master a said pick or playstyle to its maximum effectiveness. In other words, it's how good you can be. A good example of a hero with high skill ceiling is Genji or Widow. Even though you may be good at these heroes, because the skill ceiling is just so high, there's still room for improvement. Just because a hero has a low skill floor doesn't mean that they don't have a high skill ceiling. So going back to Winston, we talked about how he's generally a low skill floor hero, but in contrast, Winston has a decently high skill ceiling because of the way you can use his abilities to be effective with him to your maximum potential. Sure, jumping into the enemy team, placing a bubble and holding left click is pretty easy, but managing these cooldowns and movements in a way that maximizes your potential is difficult, and there is room for a lot of improvement with his mechanics. Also, the immense amount of game sense and positioning required to truly master Winston can take a lot of effort to learn. Knowing this, looking at win rates is a surefire way to find out whether a hero has a high skill ceiling. In bronze, Winston has a tanking 44.20% win rate with a low pick rate, but going higher and higher and higher in elo all the way to grandmaster, you can see Winston at a whopping 53.68% win rate with a decently high pick rate. Now, of course, this is a video on supports, so let's go back to Mercy and Moira. Applying the skill floor and ceiling concept, why do you think Mercy and Moira are played more in lower elos, but less in higher elos? I'll give you some time to decide. Alright, let's take a look at what they bring to the team. Mercy can give a consistent medium level heal and a damage boost to her team. She can also resurrect the fallen teammate, but she's immobile during the cast. Moira brings a medium level AoE heal, massive sustain with her right click, and an orb that can either heal or deal damage. The trend we can see with both of these healers is that they lack in burst heal for main healers, but that's not the biggest issue. And that biggest issue is a lack of utility and their ability to be punished for using an ability the wrong way. What I mean is that Mercy doesn't really have a lot of mobility despite her ultimate. This wouldn't be a problem if she had some sort of ability to peel people off of her, as her only way to escape is with ultimate or her dash, where she flies to allies, but that requires the Mercy player to have to rely on her positioning of her teammates. And in lower elos, Mercy is going to be punished as much for dashing into the front line and resurrecting in the open as much as she will in higher elos. And the same goes for Moira. Moira lacks any ability to peel other than her dash. She also can't heal forever and has to resort to actually damaging to recharge her healing gauge. This already means Moira has to go out in the open to get the suck so she can heal her team more, leaving her to get picked off fairly easily, but like I said, she isn't punished as much for going out and killing people on her own. People in low elo actually hate Moira due to her ability to 1v1 with massive sustain and a low hitbox, when in reality, a coordinated team can see a Moira doing things off on her own and take it as an advantage to push up on Moira's team because they lack a main healer. Anyways. 
Both Mercy and Moira have low skill floors as well as low skill ceilings, meaning that they're easy to pick up and there's only so much someone can do with the kit that they have. Because of this, even if you're a godly Mercy or Moira player, it can take you so far whereas other heroes with a higher skill ceiling can be mastered to be utilized to a higher effectiveness. So let's talk about those supports with the high utility. The supports that Grandmaster supports play. There's a reason why they play these heroes and we'll get to that in just a bit. But who are these heroes? Lucio, Ana, and Zenyatta are three of the support heroes that are played way more in Grandmaster where Mercy and Moira are rarely played. What all of these three supports have in common is that while each of them have varying skill floors, for example picking up Lucio and AFKing to heal is pretty easy to pick up, they all have an extremely high skill ceiling. What Grandmaster players do is maximize that skill ceiling to keep up or even carry their games. Zenyatta might not heal for a lot or have any CC at all, but communicating discords, ulting at the right moments instead of wasting it, and his overall potential to dish out tons of damage allow him to be utilized at a higher skill level. Ana doesn't have the massive amounts of damage that Zenyatta can bring out, but she can potentially bring the highest burst healing in the game, and as well as two ways to peel someone off of her. These two abilities are her Sleep and Biotic Nade. The Sleep sounds like a reasonable peel ability, but you might be asking why the Biotic Grenade counts as a peeling ability as well. This is because when someone gets on Ana, she can throw a Biotic Nade on the ground to do a few things. She heals herself, deals a reasonable amount of burst damage to the enemy diving her, and she also prevents them from being healed, making them easy to get picked off. It's basically the pepper spray of Overwatch. Ana also has a seriously high skill ceiling mechanically due to her healing output reliant on how well she can aim. So if you miss your shots, you're going to be essentially missing heals. Lucio, like I said, has a low skill ceiling with his ability to heal while being AFK, but what Grandmaster Lucio players manage and utilize is when to effectively switch between speed boost and healing, and that's important. A general rule of thumb that you can start doing to climb is to speed your team through chokes or rotations, as well as get your low mobility frontline, such as Reinhardt or Zarya, closer to the enemy team so they can start dishing out that cleave damage and making space. Then while they're in range, start healing to ensure they don't die. Another huge thing to realize is that healing isn't everything on a support. In fact, it's not even the most important thing. Remember when we talked about the reason Moira and Mercy isn't picked as much in higher elo? This is because the two supports, while they have a lot of healing, they don't have much utility. And what utility they do have, such as Mercy's Resurrect, is easily counterable. Just for clarification, utility is any form of CC or escape, or otherwise virtually what the hero can bring to the table for the team other than healing. When seeing what supports Grandmasters play, you need to evaluate how much utility the hero has, and if the hero has a lot of this, then their skill ceiling is going to be way higher as a result, as they can do more with the utility that they possess. One interesting example that we see is that Lucio players in higher elo actually heal less than Lucio's as far as bronze. Why do you think this is? Remember when we talked about Lucio's utility? He has the potential to turn any of his team into a speed demon to get out of chokes, engage, and disengage. Higher rank Lucio's heal less because they bring more value by using speed at the right times. So like I said before, really learning when to speed versus when to heal is crucial for your team. Even though Ana has plenty of utility, we still see a trend with her doing more healing the higher up we go while maintaining the same amount of damage as in low elo. This can really be cut down to a couple things. One, Ana relies heavily on aim as her healing. The better you can aim, the more you can heal. And two, they die less. This is because higher elo players have better positioning and as a result, know when and where to position at all times. Speaking about positioning, why is this so important? As a support, you're supposed to position relatively safe from harm's way, whether that's by sticking close to your team if they have dive, or out of sights from a sniper composition. Also, dying as a support is really, really bad for your team. It's to the point that if a main healer dies, the enemy can just hold W and win the team fight because they lack proper sustain. So because of that, higher elo players value positioning, and low elo players should too. Because if you position like a god, then you're going to be carrying your team in no time. Make sure to check out my Ana positioning video on exactly how to position as a supporter. Being a high elo support player requires more than just clicking heads. It takes more than being a mechanical god to suffice in this elo. Grandmaster supports have to utilize game knowledge on top of positioning and mechanics, and what I mean by game knowledge is how well one knows to game. 
some of which include what to do versus certain team compositions, what each hero can do to get to you, the cooldowns of each hero, and ultimate tracking to name a few. Sounds pretty difficult and overwhelming, but my advice is to learn these one at a time, so don't overwhelm yourself trying to learn all of this information at once. Learn it little by little as lessons and don't worry about your rank, because if you stay tilt free even when you're losing, you're still learning something new and as a result, you're going to be achieving way more in a game than someone that's mega tilted off the face of the earth. Now of course, there are more M mercy mains in high elo that can make it work, but meta wise, you're going to be way more successful picking up a Lucio, Ana, or Zenyatta to climb as your skill ceiling is so immeasurably high and as a result, you can learn them better and bring more to the table if you're good at these heroes. But the biggest takeaway from this video is to be more successful, master your cooldowns and when to use them effectively, practice your mechanical skill to hit more shots and don't die. Forehead. But in all seriousness, good positioning is going to make you die way less. So learn some good positioning spots. If you're hyped to pick up a new support from this video or want to brush up on a support you already know how to play, Make sure to check out Game Leap for hundreds of pro guides for any of these heroes you want to play. Hit that link below for a 25% discount on a membership. I had a lot of fun making this video, so I hope I was able to teach you guys something new so you can carry your games easier. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video, hit us up with a like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss out. Peace.